Alrighty, in today's video, we're going to be calculating the total years and months since date. This is a formula that a recent client asked for in which they wanted to track the tenure and how long someone's been with the organization. We're going to be manipulating strictly date related formulas and I will be introducing some basic concepts to think about while thinking through this basic formula. Obviously, we're going to be relying on the date between formula where we calculate the difference between years and months since today's date. But I also want to introduce a few other things to think about so that you don't overestimate how long it's been since the date. Some stuff to think about are the total years, which is the simple formula that we'll be working with, and then the total months in terms of months during the current year that they've been with the company, because otherwise we'd have total years and total months represent the same thing. It's gonna be important to think about conversion factors where how many months are in a year, that's 12 obviously, but the way that we structure it becomes really important because we are only gonna be calculating the months of the current year from a date as opposed to a sort of fractional way of seeing it in terms of 1.5 years or 1.6 years. We're going to be thinking of it in terms of years and months and so it'll be really important to think about rounding. be really important to understand the desired unit that you're looking for and by using a conversion factor to make sure that that is exactly what you're getting you have the proper total years and total months since a date that you mentioned. We're going to get started real quick. We're going to have a date property and a formula property. For now, let's get started with year. I think by now it's pretty common in most of my videos have date between now and then the date property and then we want to specify by year. So now we reference December 16th, 2022. It's been over a year. In our case, let's change it to current time, which is January 15th, and that is one year. Now, if we do January 16th, notice how it turns to zero. That's the tendency with these date formulas is everything is rounded up and down. And like I talked about in my previous video, it's going to be really important to use the next common denominator, which would be months, to sort of avoid instances where we're literally just one day less of a year, but it says zero. If I do January 15th, it says one year, but if I do January 14th, it still says one year. But if I go the other way, it rounds down to zero. And so in our case, it's going to be really important to use the round formula so that when we're doing the whole outcome of years and months, we never overestimate the years that are from the set date. We're going to want to do this with the month. In this example, I'm going to be creating several different formula outcomes and then piecing them together so that it's a lot easier for you to understand conceptually and to put them together through more of a conversion factor lens. You might think, oh, well, we can just change it to months and that might be easy. And then why can't we just add the year and month to just create that outcome? Well, it's not as simple as that, because if you were to do that, it it would look like this. And basically when it says January 15th, just today's date, it'll say, oh, it's been one year and 12 months. That's basically saying the same thing. In this case, that's redundant information. And so we only want to track months when it's been less than 12 months or more than zero months. Let's say if we were one month and a year away from current date, we would want to say one year and one month as opposed to one and 13 months. We're basically trying to only show months between one and 11 months, and we let year be its own unit of measure so that we don't have this overlapping information. Like I've showed in the very beginning, we want to measure the remaining months that are left after we think about all the years it's been since a said date. In our case, because we already have a year output, we only need to think about the months output so then we can say it's been one year and blank months. We want to have this output be accurate as opposed to having overlapping information where we have one year and 13 months. So the way we can do that is by using this idea of a conversion factor in which we are changing how many remaining months are left based on how many years have passed. So what we can actually do to go ahead and subtract years in this formula is basically by reusing what we've already created here and then adding that conversion factor. So in this case, we'll just copy previous formula where we're measuring the date between now and years. And because we are going from years to month, we need to think about that desired unit that we're measuring. If we work backwards from getting years to months, we need to multiply the number of years by the number of months there are in a year. When we do that, we get all the months it's been since the date started minus all the years it's been so that we only think about the remaining months of the year like we show here. And so by doing this, we get one month and that's completely accurate because it's been one year and one month. 
And we've been able to do this because we're rounding to the nearest integer for both month and years. And so we're not going to overcount it like we did here, where it says one year and 13 months. We're now saying one year and one month because that's equivalent to 13 months. I'm not sure if you're still following here. The total months and then subtracting all the years, and then we can now calculate the remaining months there are based on that calculation. We multiplied the number of years by 12 to create that conversion factor. And so now we're factoring in the number of years it's been so that we can isolate the number of months specific to that year it's been since the specified date. So now if we go back to today, a year ago on January 15th, notice how it says one year and zero months. Now if we go here and say go one more day, notice how because it hasn't been a year yet, it goes to zero, it rounds down, and then months also rounds down. And instead of saying 12 months, it's going to say 11 months because it's been slightly less than a year. In this case, this is exactly what we want because we don't want to say it's been a year because it hasn't been a year. And we also don't want to say it's been 12 months because it hasn't been 12 months. This is a really great way to round down. And so if we go the other way around and say 14, see how that happens as well. It's been a year, but it's going to round down because one day is one month. And so it's going to say zero months. So in this case, to take this formula that we just created and remove what we had in the beginning, paste it in there, we got to open and close the bracket. And now we have this neat output, which just takes a combination of the two formulas we created between year and months. So now when we have a date, let's say this is 22, we say 15, two years and zero months, right? And now if we go one month ahead of time and say February 15th, we have now one year and 11 months. If we go backwards from that, go to December 15th, we say two years and one month. Hopefully this all made sense. This is a relatively short video, but this is sort of an illustrating one of the limitations with date related formula properties where you're going to have to think about rounding, think about your desired unit that we want to create an output by, and to think about it in terms of conversion factors where if we want to get years and we want to get months or we want to get days, we need to think about how many days are in a month, how many weeks are in a year, and to really think about when we want to use the smaller unit of time to describe what you're actually trying to measure. In our case, we created that difference between all months and all years so that we can calculate the remaining months in a year and so that we can get that year and month specification that is totally responsive to the date. Again, we don't want to overestimate time and so rounding within these formula properties can really help in that sense. Thank you if you made it this far for watching. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.